Hey, beauty pros. Welcome to Beauty Business Breakthroughs. My name is Shara, your guide to success in the beauty industry. In each episode, I'm going to be sharing my tips, tricks, and real life experiences. Plus, we'll bring in industry experts to drop their game-changing advice. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, get ready for practical insights that will elevate your beauty business. Let's dive in. Hey, hey, I am so excited to be here with you guys today. It's been a little bit since I have been live sharing my business tips and tricks. So I'm back excited to share some of my tidbits of knowledge and expertise with you guys and really just help you to navigate this wonderful world of self-employment, right? So today we are talking about how to strategically and successfully transition from working a full-time job and transition into going full-time self-employed. So we will go ahead and go over some of the steps that are needed, some of my recommendations, things that I did. Keep in mind, my background is in business and finance, which is one of the wonderful reasons that I have attributed my success in business to my background, right? So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm really excited to see you guys all on here today. By show of hands, you know, just go ahead and put a heart in the comment below, but by show of hands, go ahead and let me know if you are currently working a full-time job or a regular job, quote unquote, and working your beauty business or your self-employed business. Maybe it's on the side or whatever, but go ahead and put a heart in there and let me know if you're working a regular job and your beauty business. Okay, so we've got a couple of people, awesome. So you can definitely relate to what I'm going to be talking about today. Again, I started out in the beauty industry working a full-time job, okay? And I went ahead and was working my business part-time. So it doesn't matter how much time you're putting into it, but I just wanted to go ahead and get an idea. Now, of those people, maybe you are looking to go ahead and transition from working your full-time job to working your business, your beauty business, full-time, right? So go ahead, by show of hands, go ahead and put a, a heart in the comments below and let me know if you are interested in transitioning from your full-time job to full-time self-employment. Again, just go ahead and put a heart in that comment and this will let me know that you are in the right place, okay? So a couple of things, like I said, let me just go ahead and give you a little bit of backstory. So when I started the beauty business, I was working full-time for the federal government. I was working for FEMA. For those of you who don't know, FEMA is the agency that handles all of our national disasters, okay? So it, this was pre-pandemic and I was building my business part-time, right? So my full-time job was from 6.30 to 3, and then on some days it was until 4. And so my clients would be scheduled from 4 o'clock on some days, and then on, on other days that I was working until 4, I would go ahead and schedule them at 5, right? So I would technically work like Monday through Thursday after hours for my business, and then I was working at Saturdays as well. So obviously, eventually, I was able to kind of like switch up my schedule and, you know, do some different things, which I'll, we'll talk about in another episode. But with that being said, that was kind of my my schedule, right? So some things that I made sure... Now, now keep in mind, when I was building this business, my goal was never to have my self-employment replace my day job. That was never my goal. I never wanted to be somebody who was self-employed. I was very content, very comfortable getting my paycheck, right? Having my 401k and my retirement, having my health and medical benefits, my kids were covered. Like I was completely content with that. Like that was my comfort zone. So 
I wasn't building my business again with the intent to be self-employed, right? It kind of just fell in my lap. And we'll get into that in a little bit as well. But in the beginning phases of building the business, I sacrificed a lot. Now, we're all given the same 24 hours in a day. We're all given the same seven days in a week, right? And so I maximized my time. As women, we are natural multitaskers, right? And so I literally made the most of my time every single day. If I had a break at work, if I had lunch at work, if I was off for a three-day weekend, if I was in between clients, or maybe I had a client who was getting a service that didn't require my attention the entire time. Maybe they're uh, getting their teeth whitening or something like that, or body sculpting, right? And I put the machine on them. In between that time, that's when I was doing everything else that I would consider like the administrative stuff. So I was making sure to respond to, to messages, making sure to post my behind the scenes, you know, all of those kind of things that sometimes can be busy work, right? And tedious, but I was making the most of my time because I was obviously from 6.30 in the morning. So if I'm getting getting to work at 6.30 in the morning, that means I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning. So I'm not getting home sometimes until eight or nine o'clock at night because I'm seeing my clients from four to seven and five to eight, right? That was kind of my schedule of seeing clients. So sometimes I'm not getting home till eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night and I'm going to sleep to go turn around and do it all over again the next day, right? So making sure that you maximize your time while you're in that building phase is extremely important, okay? Now, are you gonna have to do that forever? No, realistically, you don't, you know? And I talk about this in my program, how to work smarter, not harder, how to be able to maximize your time, make the most bang for your buck in the time that you are seeing clients, you know, things of that nature. So, but the key concept here, right, is making the most of your time, using your time wisely, being very self-aware and mindful of how you spend your time, what you're spending your time doing, how you're feeding your mind and, you know, your soul and what you're reading, what you're watching, all of those kind of things, right? So that's kind of step one, if you will, or identifying one of the things. The other thing that really rang, stuck out in my head and, and what really prompted this IG live, which I have discussed this topic before. However, I felt like it was really, really important to discuss again, was the fact that the, the gal that I had spoke with this last week, she had actually went from working a full-time job to just plunging in to working self-employed, right? Without any plan, without any strategy, without any safety net, like there was no nothing in place, right? And so it surprised me, but it didn't because I have heard this concept and people do this. And I'm like, there is a better way, guys. There's a better way, okay? And so... Again, like I said on my my story the other day, I was able to guide her and I'm going to touch base with her at the end of this week, but I was able to kind of guide her and give her some tips on what she can do to kind of get herself out of where she's at now. But it's a lot easier for me to help you, right, if we're doing something ahead of the game. So very similar to my kids, right? I tell my kids, I'm like, I'd much rather you come to me and ask me for my advice because I've been in your shoes before and I can give you the tips on what steps need to be taken rather than you going and trying to do it on your own or you talking to a friend or getting poor advice and now you're coming back to me to try and help you dig you out of this hole, right? That makes it really, really hard and digging you out of that hole is going to be a longer process than if we had just done it right from the first time. So with that being said, some of the things that I I really, really target in on when it comes to leaving your job full time is you want to make sure that your business 
is not only replacing your income, but it is more like doubling your income. So let's just say, for instance, you work for a job and you make $5,000 a month. You want to be making $10,000 a month in your business consistently. What does consistently look like, right? That could be you building your business for six months, a year, 18 months. I don't know what it looks like for you individually, okay? But you want to make sure that you are making this money consistently. Now, again, that means you're going to be doing a lot of sacrificing. You're going to miss out on events. You're going to miss out on dinners and brunches and parties and whatever, right? With your friends and your family sometimes, but you have to prioritize. You have to prioritize what's important to you in that moment. That doesn't mean you have to miss everything, but you are going to have to miss some things, right? And so making sure that you are consistently hitting that, that target, okay, is going to make sure that you know that when you do leave your job full time, that you feel confident that you're going to be able to make the money that you're used to be making and then some, right? Because you always want to be able to pour back into your business, invest back into your business. And maybe you want to, now you don't have health insurance. Now you don't have retirement. Now you don't have 401k or whatever it is that you have, right? Now you need to spend some of, the, of that money doing those things, right? And so, Again, that consistency that I talk about with making two times the amount of money, that is going to differ for everybody, right? So depending on the amount of time that you spend building it, the amount of time that you're sacrificing, your price points, your area of expertise is, the services that you provide, the actual geographic area that you're in, all of these things are going to take a factor into how long it's going to take for you to go ahead and build this business to replace your full-time job, okay? The next thing that I had mentioned, like I said, was making sure that 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 business replaces your full-time job twice, two times. So if you're making 5,000, you in your full-time job, you want to be making 10 grand in your business, all right? So the next thing that I'm gonna suggest is that you have a savings, you have a safety net, Okay, you want to make sure that you are putting away for a rainy day, you have money to be able to pay your rent and whatever your expenses are. Okay, when I'm talking about rent, I'm talking about your personal expenses, gas, car loan, mortgage, daycare, food, clothes, whatever your monthly expenses look like. Maybe your monthly expenses are $3,000 a month. Woohoo! I don't know where anybody can live for $3,000 a month, but maybe they are, okay? So if your bills are $3,000 a month, you wanna make sure that you have at least three to six months saved up. So that means that you're going to have somewhere between nine and $18,000 saved up so that when or if, okay, you have a slower month than the month before, you have something to rely on, okay? And I say when, because it's inevitable, okay? Self-employment is not like this. That's your regular day job. You get your salary, you get your hourly rate, and you come in and you get paid no matter how much you produce, okay? That is not the case with self-employment. And the other reason that I want you to really build your business and sacrifice them, because you have to see what it's going to take to have a mindset of somebody who is self-employed. What about the roller coaster ride with the ups and the downs? You've got a good week. You've got a bad week. You've got, oh, you're doing really great. Now you're on your high. And then, oh, you know, you've only got five clients this week, right? And then now you're ready to quit. Like, no, that's not the way it goes. I say this so many times, self-employed is not for the week. It's not for the week. It is a marathon, not a race. You have to be steady, okay? And you have to go ahead and continue, whether the income is going up or down, up or down. You've got to stay consistent with everything that you're doing, 
Okay. So you don't want to go out here and just plummet into self-employment with nothing to fall back on. Okay. And now all of a sudden you're looking around like, oh my God, like, I didn't know that this was what is what this is what it entails. You know, I thought it was this. I thought it was that, you know, these influencers say this, this influencer says that like, no, I, by no means am I saying that's ugly, but you have to have the right mindset mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, you know, you have to be able to go with the waves of how self-employment works. So for anybody who works in an industry, maybe you work in the mortgage industry. So you know what that looks like. It's volatile. Sometimes you've got your highs and sometimes you've got your lows. Okay. And you need to be able to know how to mentally sustain through, okay, those lows. Right. So by show of hands, you know, just let me know if this is resonating with you. You know, it makes sense. If you can relate to it, you understand, you hear where I'm coming from. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to the question when starting out or in a new location, what's the best way to get a space to take clients from home? If home is not an option, then renting a booth or office suite somewhere while working. Okay. So let me go ahead and just address this really quick. I think that if you are new in the business, okay, you're going to have to figure out one, what's, what's best for your situation. Some people it's traveling. Some people it's opening up a spot in their home. Some people it is going and getting a, a spot, you know, like renting a suite in a location or a salon or a studio or something like that. Right. You have to figure out what's best for you. Okay. Because what's best for me may not be what's best for you, but if you're going to be traveling, you want to make sure that you are looking at all options, okay? You want to make sure that it's going to make sense for you and it's going to make sense for your clients and you have the clients help to support that. If it's in your home, and that, this is a whole nother topic, but if it's in your home, you are going to want to make sure that your home is inviting, that you have a nice place, that it smells good. You don't have strangers in and out of the home. Your kids aren't running around screaming, you know, all of those things right? You want to treat it like it's a business because it is. All right. Now the best option, if you can afford it, would be for you to go ahead and rent a a suite or something in a salon. Why? Because you're going to be getting some walk-in traffic from people who are coming to other providers, providing different services, right? And you're going to get some referrals probably and vice versa. So that's going to enable you to get a little bit more clientele. There's going to be that networking aspect. You're going to be able to feed from other people's advice because they've been in the business longer, right? No matter what type of service that they're providing. So that would be my recommendation. You always want to make sure that you get something that is affordable. You can, you know, afford to pay with, you know, maybe two clients, two clients, You see two clients and your rent is paid, right? When I started out, my rent was like $250, maybe $300, somewhere in between there, super reasonable, one or two clients, and that was taken care of. So I could basically like pay that with with no thought, right? Now, of course, this was years ago, a few years ago, four or five years ago. So things have changed. Prices are a lot higher. You know, again, I don't know what, what the prices of renting space are because I don't have a space. This is my, this is my workspace, but kind of giving, going back to what it takes to, to leave your job full-time or your, leave your full-time job. You want to make sure that there is a strategic plan in place, right? Do you have the clientele to serve your business, right? Do you have the consistency? Do you have the mindset? Are you stacking your money, right, for a rainy day? Do you know how to market? Are you advertising? Are you posting regularly? Like, you've got to be doing all of the legwork to build that business for six, 12, 18 months to be able to know confidently that your business will sustain should you leave your full-time job? Again, I like to see you making twice the amount that your full-time job is making because if you do that, then you know that you're leaving 
like, okay, I can do this. Yeah, this is like, you've got it on speed dial, right? But let's take into consideration the fact that some of you may have just plunged into self-employment without a strategy and you are drowning in debt and you're struggling to build your business and so on and so forth, okay? That is the case for some people. And I wish you had reached out to me sooner, but that's okay. We've got an idea for you. Some of the things that I talked to her about doing was she rents a space, okay, in a salon. So I told her to get with her, the owner, see if the owner maybe, so maybe the owner only works certain days or certain hours. And she has clients that are wanting to get services done by her on days or hours that she's not available. We'll find it out from the owner, okay? If she's willing to let you service her clients for commission, right? Um, now, obviously this requires a good rapport with the owner that you're renting space from, but if you have a good relationship with them, why wouldn't they, right? So that's enabling you to kind of have some flexibility and go ahead and service clients in the same location that you're already at, okay? So that was one of the ideas that I had mentioned to her. In mentioning that, she said, well, you know, the owner did say that she needs a receptionist at times. And I'm like, well, that's perfect. Again, so she has the ability to potentially service the owner's clients, right, for commission. She also has the ability to potentially work as a receptionist at the salon or spa that she works at and that she rents space from, right? Like what better idea than for her to do that? Now, leading up to this, we were just talking about her feeling like if she did get a part-time job, she was a failure. If she did, you know, all of those things that come with, well, no, I really want to make this work. I really want to be full-time self-employed. Okay, well, that's great and fine and dandy. You can do that like later, okay? Right now, we need to relieve some of the stress and the pressure that you're experiencing from plunging into self-employment with no strategy. And the best way to do that is for you to go out there and get a, a, a part-time job. Maybe you can get a full-time job, hell, right? Whatever it is that you need to do, you can still go do that. And then your business is going to be worked on the side, right? It's going to be worked part-time because you don't even have the clientele to support that at this point, right? She's only making about $2,000 a month in her business. That's not even enough to sustain you like part-time, right? So she was feeling some guilt surrounding like doing something uh, are not focusing on her business solely. And I'm like, listen, you need to show up in your business the best that you can. The best way you can do that is for you to relieve some of the stress and the pressure that you're experiencing right now because of the guilt with your finances and not having the money to support yourself and having to ask family and friends to help you and things of that nature. Let's relieve some of that stress Okay, then you can be level-headed and clear-minded and you can show up in your business 100% because you're feeling good knowing that your bills are paid. You can eat. You're not in foreclosure. You're not at risk of getting your car repossessed, right? So those are some of the things, you know, that you can do to go ahead and compensate if you already did take the plunge into self-employment full-time without that strategy in place. How do you build clientele when the place you work for doesn't want you taking clients with you? I'm sorry, I don't quite understand it, but I, I might understand it. Let me go back to this rent is 600. 600 isn't bad. That's two, maybe three clients. You can do that with two or three clients, no brainer, super easy, okay? So Dream Lux Spa, I did see you a message previously and I think if I'm not mistaken, it sounds like you work for a salon, right? 
And so you're essentially an employee or a contractor of that salon. So the clients are owned by the salon, not by you is what it sounds like. So please correct me if I'm wrong. If that is the case as a business owner, obviously I'm not going to advise you like take their clients or anything like that, but you know, you would just essentially work your business on the side, just as if you were working any other type of full-time job, right? So you're going to be promoting your business on the side. You're going to set up a location, maybe in your home, maybe you travel, whatever the case is, whatever. You're going to be doing everything the same, just as if you were working a full-time job at, say, a law firm or something along those lines, okay? So building clientele is something that I talk about. I have a few IGTVs that are saved. If you go to my IGTVs tab, it's the middle tab. You can click, there's a button that says series. You click that drop down and it says business tips and tricks. And you'll see some of those titles and building clients, Groupon, things of that nature. Those are all topics that I've discussed before. So highly recommend that. We're getting close to the end of the time for me today, but I did want to at least remind you guys that I do have a signature program where I coach you personally, one-on-one -on -one, throughout your journey on all of these different aspects of building your business, building clientele, and all of that good stuff. So click the link in my bio. You will go to the Get Fully Booked Accelerator Tour. That will go ahead and give you some background and take you behind the scenes of how the program works and give you an opportunity to set up a time to discuss it with me and see if we're a good fit for each other. Okay, let me go ahead and answer these last couple questions. I work in business salon, working my own set schedule, but get more attention from, from the spa salon. Awesome. Okay, what kind of promotion I could offer to keep myself more busy? The who? That's kind of a loaded question because again, Everything is relative. It depends on the pricing that you have. Personally, for me, I always try to do like one promo per month. So say for instance, it was June, you know, all of the graduates, any of the graduates you get X amount off for teeth whitening, things of that nature. I try to keep it really simple for the month. So with Thanksgiving coming up, you know, you can do something centered around giving thanks and being thankful. You know, you're thankful for your clientele. I don't know if you have an email list with your clients, but send your, your clients an email. You will go ahead and send your clients an email, letting them know like, hey, you know, I'm giving back to the people and, and letting, you know, thanking you for um, supporting me. You know, here's 10% off your next service. Good until da 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 things of that nature, right? You can always do things of the, like a friendship one, you know, bring your friend in, buy one, get one free, buy one, get one 50% off, you know, something along those lines. But I always recommend having promotions going. I have a promotion going at all times, um, whether it's supplies or equipment, I have some type of promotion going on all of the time. And I think that you just have to be creative based on the type of clientele you have, what your price point is, and also where you're at. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how many clients you have, but another way for you to really get a little bit more exposure is for you to always tag your clients. That way they tag, they repost it, and then that gives you more exposure. You can also do giveaways. I don't recommend doing free services, maybe a discount or a flat amount off, something along those lines, but you can do giveaways and things of that nature. That way they have some skin in the game. But those are just some ideas. Again, I wish you guys all the best of luck. I will see you next time and stay blessed, happy, and safe. That's a wrap for today's Beauty Business Breakthroughs. I hope you found these insights valuable and actionable for your beauty business. Remember, success in this industry is within your reach. If you're hungry for more and ready to take your beauty business to the next level, consider joining our Get Fully Booked Accelerator program. We are dedicated to helping beauty professionals like you achieve extraordinary success with strategies that can take your business 
to 10K per month and beyond. Simply send us a direct message on Instagram, Lux Beauty and Body Co. with the word success, and we'll provide you with all of the details on how you can be a part of this game-changing program. Your journey to a thriving beauty business starts now. Thank you again for tuning in, and until next time, stay inspired, stay motivated, and keep making those beauty business breakthroughs.